In this video, we're going to look at a second physical example to help motivate the need for the calculus of variations. It'll be very similar to the optics example we looked at in the last video, but in this case, we're going to look at the shape of a liquid drop. So we have a drop of liquid, say water, and you put it on a flat, smooth surface. And the question is, what is the shape of that liquid drop? So here's a schematic. This is the outline of the drop. This is the interface with the flat, smooth surface. And u is a function of r, r being the radial distance out from the origin, from this symmetry axis. u then will be the height of each portion of the liquid drop. So u is a function of r going from 0 to capital R, the radius of the circular shape of the, the base of the liquid drop. There is a contact angle alpha that we'll talk about in a little bit as well. So the physical principle that governs the shape of the liquid drop is minimization of the total energy of that drop. So we just need to think about and quantify all the various contributions to the total energy of the drop. And then minimization of that total energy will give us the, the shape. So there are two forms of energy. There's the potential energy and then the surface energy together, which form the total energy of the liquid drop. So let's look at each of those in turn. We'll quantify the potential energy, then we'll quantify the surface energy. Okay, so the potential energy per unit volume of a horizontal portion of the drop. So we're going to take a little sliver that'll be du high. So it has a differential height, but it's the full circular cross section of the liquid drop at that u location. So that differential thickness then is du, and the potential energy of that is rho gu. So you think of rho gh as potential energy, h being height, now the height is u. Rho here is the density, g is acceleration due to gravity. And then we also have the volume of this little infinitesimally pi-shaped segment, and that's pi r squared du. So pi r squared, that's the area of the circle, and then du, that's the little differential height of the, the circle. So we can form the total potential energy, we'll call it E sub p, and that's the rho g u, so that's the rho g h, so to speak, for each little piece, and then each little piece is pi r squared du, each little horizontal slice of the liquid drop, that'll be pi r squared du, that's its volume. So the integral of that then, the sum of all those little slivers, gives us the total potential energy of the entire liquid drop. The rho, g, and pi, those are constants. So we can take them outside the integral. And then we have our r squared. We have u. And then we have du. Now you notice the limits of integration are in terms of r. r is the independent variable. So we like to write our functional, this definite integral, in terms of r rather than u. Well, du, because u is only a function of r, is du dr dr. So then we can rewrite the total potential energy in this form. So that's the potential energy. Now let's think about the surface energy. So same idea, but now we're looking at the surface of the liquid drop. So the surface energy of the liquid gas interface, each little horizontal portion, so it's that same horizontal slice that we use for the potential energy, but now we're just thinking about the surface area of the edge of that slice. So it has a vertical thickness du, and it has a circumference of 2 pi r, the circumference of the circle. So 2 pi r ds will be the surface area of the edge of our little disk. Now ds instead of du, because it's, it's at an angle, it's not vertical, du is vertical, ds is along the interface shape. So once again, we'll sum these up through integration to get the total energy due to the surface area. We have the surface energy per unit area, sigma, so that's a property of the interface, times the area of that interface, 2 pi r ds, for the disk. And we add up all those horizontal disks vertically to get the total surface energy of the liquid drop. 2 pi and sigma, those are constants. So those come out front. And then we have r ds. As we did for the optics example, we don't want to have our independent variable be s, because that's along the surface. We want it to be r in this case, so our independent variable is r. So this is very similar to what we did in the optics example. We can write ds as the square root of 1 plus u prime squared all times dr. 
It's exactly the same as the optics example, except there we had x, now we have r as our independent variables. The details are here, ds squared is dr squared plus du squared, for a little infinitesimal piece of the arc. And we can substitute in the total differential for du is du dr dr. So substitute that in here, factor out the dr squared, and we get the 1 plus u prime squared, square root of that, times dr. And now the only difference is the u prime is with respect to r instead of x. So this is our usual arc length expression. So we have 2 pi sigma times the integral over the surface area, r times the square root of 1 plus u prime squared times dr. So then we sum the two energies, and we get the total energy of the liquid drop, the potential energy plus the surface energy. Here's the term for the potential energy. Here's the term from the surface energy. You clearly see the rho g is for potential energy. Sigma is for the surface energy. So now the shape of the liquid drop, u as a function of r, will be that which minimizes this functional. So it's the u of r here, here, and here, that when you put it into this definite integral, it'll produce the smallest value of the total energy of the system, in this case, the liquid drop. Now there's some additional features in this case that we have to be able to take into account, and this will point ahead to some of the things that we'll need to be able to account for in the general variational context. And that is the fact that we have a constraint. The constraint here is on the total volume, so we know how much liquid we put in to the, the drop and that volume therefore is a constant so we can impose that as a constraint so we'll call that v bar for the volume and to get that that would be pi r squared du that would be the volume of each slice as we saw before when we calculated the potential energy and then we add up all the slices to get the entire volume of the liquid drop and again du that's du dr dr and so we can write that as an expression for v bar, the total volume of the liquid drop. So the point here is that whatever the u of r is, when I stick it into this expression, this definite integral, it is constrained to be equal to the given volume of liquid that we put in the drop. So that's a constraint, an integral constraint in this case, on the minimization process. We also have the contact angle, which we discussed briefly before. So if you zoom in on this portion here, this is the surface, this is the liquid in here, and this is the gas out here, and this is the interface between the liquid and the gas. The angle to the tangent is alpha at the base. So that's the contact angle, the angle where the interface contacts with the, the solid surface. So there's some geometry here. We don't need to worry about the details, but what you get is that du dr at that contact location is equal to minus tan alpha. That's just from the geometry, and you can see how the trig works out. So we also have that along the vertical center line of the bubble. So that's actually the u-axis. Along the u-axis, because of the axis symmetry of the bubble, so it doesn't depend on theta, the shape is the same for any theta, we have an additional requirement that du dr along that symmetry line is equal to zero. So that means it's flat at the top. It can't be sloped at the top. It wouldn't be axisymmetric and not a function of, of theta. So it actually turns out that whereas we would normally need two boundary conditions, because we'll have a second order ODE to solve, we actually have three in this case. And, and the extra boundary condition that we have here would actually be used to determine the unknown base radius R of the bubble. So if you think about it, when you put the, the liquid on the surface, you don't know what capital R is gonna be. So that's actually, in a sense, a variable, and this third boundary condition will help us determine that. In the end, what we have is a definite integral. So here it is. We have this definite integral, right here, for the total energy. And we're looking for the U as a function of R that minimizes that total energy. So we want to determine the function that minimizes this functional, but now subject to our integral constraint on the total volume of the bubble. So you'll notice in this case we had two contributions to the functional. We had two definite integrals that sum up to give us the total energy, and that's reflecting the physics of the particular problem. 
So the actual shape is really a competition between these two effects. So if you think of the two extremes, if we only had potential energy and you wanted to minimize the total potential energy of the drop, then the drop would become very wide and have minimal height so that the rho g u, the u, would be as small as possible. So it would be a large, wide, but very shallow drop in order to minimize the total potential energy. On the other hand, to minimize the surface energy, you would actually end up with a sphere. So if you have a given volume and you want to minimize the total surface area and therefore surface energy, then it turns out that that requires a sphere. So the reality will be somewhere in between, depending on the g, the planet that you're on, the density of the liquid, the surface tension uh, at that interface, as well as the contact angle, which comes from Young's equation, which I forgot to mention before. So depending on those parameters, it'll determine where this competition, this little tug of war, ends up. So the reality will be somewhere in between. It'll be a minimization of surface energy as well as potential energy. So neither one is as small as it could be, but combined they're as small as they can be given these parameters. Once again, we now have a problem in the calculus of variations. I want to determine the u as a function of r, which is our dependent variable, that minimizes our functional, the total energy of the drop. If I knew the shape of the liquid drop, I could evaluate capital E, I could determine that energy, but I don't know u. I want to determine the u of r that minimizes that total energy.